Hi guys, this is Moni from PTE Magic. Welcome back to my channel. So yeah, recently one student named Kumash who needed 65 each for his PTE exam. However, after joining our class, not only did he get 65, but he also scored 82 overall with 90 speaking. So let's check out his score report. Uh, my target was 65 in uh, each of the sections and I got like more than 65 in all of them. So overall I got 82. 82. That was super super tips, tricks and techniques you guys mentioned helped me lots. Yeah. And then uh, with um, the online platform or like the mock test, I mm. took it. It was a really really good experience. So I'm sure that you guys have witnessed many success stories from uh, students where they told you that they got 90 in VTE or 79 plus and just by telling you the tips and tricks might not be enough which is why I decided to collect the recording of Kumash mock test in speaking so that you guys can watch him and learn from the way he does the speaking part. Prior to his real test, Komesh completed a mock test on our BTE platform, which is btemagicpractice.com. And on our platform, the mock test that we use uh, have the same questions as the real test. And also the marking algorithm is very similar. So it really helped Komesh to get familiar with the exam pattern and also to boost his confidence. Okay, so let's get started. Using more than 50 interviews, award-winning writer Danny Denzinger creates a fascinating mosaic of the people behind New York's magnificent Metropolitan Museum of Art from aristocratic Arabic director of the museum, Philip D. Motebello, to the curators who have a deep knowledge and passionate appreciation for their collection from the security guards to the philanthropists who keep the museum's financial life blood flowing. With a flu or coronavirus, it can take several days for the body to ramp up an effective response to a viral infection. New research describes how different cells in the immune system work together, communicate and in the case of cells called neutrophilis, bring about their own depth to help fight off infections. The finding could have important implications for the development of vaccines and antiviral therapies. The province of accurate and authoritative statistical information strengthens our society. It provides a basis for decisions to be made on public policy, such as determining electrical boundaries and where to locate schools and hospitals. It also allows businesses to know their market, grow their business and improve their marketing strategies by targeting their activities appropriately.
the coronavirus pandemic has shifted many of our interactions online with zoom video calls replacing in-person classes work meetings conferences and other events will all that screen time damage our vision maybe not it turns out that our visual perception is highly adaptable according to new research The asteroid that slammed into the moon 3.8 billion years ago, creating the Imperium Basin, may have had a diameter of at least 150 miles, according to a new estimate. The work helps explain puzzling geological features on the moon's near side and has implications for understanding the evolution of the early solar system. Dolphins, whales, and porpoises are all social animals, but some species are more sociable than others. This depends on the environment because a species adopts the lifestyle most suitable for this. Among dolphins, forming groups makes it easier for them to find food, reproduce, and gain knowledge. They are safer too because dolphins can communicate danger when there are threats around. The books are filled with drawings of machines invented when he was a student. The books are filled with drawing machines invented with them when then he was a student. A group of former students are reminiscing about their college days. A group of former students are reminiscing about the college days. Students are expected to observe the honor code in academic pursuit and the university representatives. Students are expected to honor the perspective code in attendance to invite the university and the prospect. By studying history, we can look at successes and mistakes to change our actions in the future. By studying history, we can look at looking at the mistakes and then looking at them correcting it. The course comprises 20 hours of lectures, seminars and tutorials each week. The course comprises of 20 hours of lecturers, examinations, tutorials over the week. It is obligatory for companies to provide details of their industrial processes. It is obligatory for the companies to provide their industrial details to the companies.
biology is the backbone of many specialized courses in the university. Biology is the backbone of many specialized courses in the university. Wireless Internet has revolutionized the way business communications occur. Wireless business has revolutionized the way the businesses occur. The given graph illustrates us women in the labor force by marital status from 1900 to 2011. On the y-axis, it gives us percentage in the labor force. On the x-axis, it gives us the years. It can also be seen from the graph that it would be within the age group of 25 to 54. The not married ones are indicated by the purple line. The married ones are indicated by the blue line. It can be concluded from the graph that there is a high number of not married women in 2010 in comparison to the same year of 2010 towards the married women. The given graph shows us the level of sport players' salaries from 1970 to 2001. The x-axis has the years, the y-axis has the annual salary in US dollars. There is basically three sports covered in it. That is baseball, basketball and football. It can be determined that from 1970 to the year 2000, there has been a gradual increase in all of those salaries. It can be concluded from the graph that baseball players get an average salary whereas basketball players get the most salary and the least salary is for football players. The given picture illustrates us a man with a thumbs up and the uniform that he is wearing. It can be seen that he is wearing some safety uniforms and it's got high waist with high colors like yellow and the t-shirt is of the blue color. It can also be seen that he is wearing a hat, glasses, productive shoes, a productive earpieces, a face mask and gloves. It can be concluded that all of these are very important when working in industrial sectors. It can be illustrated from the table given that it is describing age distribution of gastrointestinal tumors. 
it is classified in three different groups age in years number of cases and percentage it can be seen from the picture that 50 to 24 age group has least number of cases that is 82 with just 2.8 percent and with the age group of 65 and above the number of cases are 433 with a percentage of 14.6 in conclusion it can be seen that the age group of 45 to 54 has the most number of cases and percentage The given picture shows us top 10 US cities with the largest population increase. Population increase in America's 10 fastest growing cities from July 1, 2011 to July 1, 2012. This current data is from the source of US Census Bureau population division, which is vintage 2012 population estimates. New York City has 67,058, and the least one is forward, 16,328. It can be seen and concluded that New York City has the most number of population increase from year 2011 to 2012. Sometimes it's the little things that can make big things happen. Fleas in the plague, atoms and nuclear bombs, diminutive leaders in world history. Soot is one of these little things. Soot, also known as black carbon, is released when you burn dung, coal, diesel fuel, and wood. From LA to Mumbai, soot causes respiratory illnesses like lung cancer and asthma, and contributes to 1.6 million premature deaths every year, mostly among the poor. And it gets worse. Atmospheric currents carry soot thousands of miles from where it is produced to the Himalayas and the Arctic. Black carbon being black absorbs sunlight, so even a little soot on snow makes it melt faster. And when snow melts, global sea levels rise, threatening our fresh water, indigenous communities, and polar bears who hunt on the Arctic ice. Climate change has been a big thing for a while, and carbon dioxide has been its main cause. Scientists estimate that soot causes 25% of human-caused global warming. It's the second leading cause of Arctic warming after carbon dioxide. Let's not underestimate the impact of this tiny particle. But there's good news. Reducing black carbon may be the fastest way to slow global warming and buy time for the Arctic. Yes, even more so than changing a light bulb. And since black carbon only stays in the atmosphere for a couple of weeks, reducing it would produce results immediately. Of course, reducing soot alone won't solve global warming. But solving our soot problem now will help buy time for the Arctic and allow us to deal with the bigger problem of carbon dioxide. We have the cleaner industries, cook stoves, and diesel. Now we have to use them. In developed nations, we've significantly reduced our black carbon, but we still have much more to do. We need to tighten our standards at home and invest in cleaner technologies in developing nations. In a world going on 7 billion people, you might feel rather little yourself. But if you urge the US government and the European Union to take the lead on black carbon reduction, you can make a big difference. Go to stopsoot.org and help stop these little things from causing big trouble. The speaker mentions that little things make a big difference. He also mentions that it can be from atoms to nuclear bombs. Little things have definitely and it can be seen that it makes a very big impact, such as black carbon, diesel, coal, etc. Sit can cause lung, cancer, asthma, etc. And especially, mostly among the poor. Himalayan to the Arctic regions have always been affected by these. It also sees there's the, the climate change, snow melts, and sea level rises. CO2s have been the main reason, and climate change is real. It can be concluded that climate change is.
This is Hans Krebs, who in 1937 published a paper showing the sequence of chemical reactions by which energy is released in individual cells. Um, it's called the Krebs cycle, which some of you may remember from your chemistry course in high school. Krebs is a wonderful example to me of how a scientist who is determined can overcome all kinds of human obstacles. Krebs' father constantly discouraged him and told him that he had just mediocre intelligence and would never do anything important in his life as a teenager. Uh, what Krebs remembers in his memoir, his father said to him, you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. And later on, when Krebs studied with the great biochemist Otto Warburg, Warburg also told him the same thing, um, not the same quote, but that he had only mediocre ability and would never be a great scientist. And we all hear about how important it is for parents to encourage their children, but sometimes the children will go on to do great things no matter what we say to them. The lecturer is talking about Hans Krebs published sequence of chemical reaction. He is also talking about Hans Krebs and the Krebs cycle which has been taught in the schools. It has also been determined that it overcomes all kind of human obstacles. It was mentioned that Krebs had a mediocre intelligence and his ability was also mediocre by one of the fellow biochemists Otto Warburg. Krebs studies was also being commented by Otto Warburg. It can be concluded that parents should encourage their children to study. Can we never get to absolute zero? What a wonderful question. I wish I had a wonderful answer to go with it. Here's the problem. There is actually a law of physics called the third law of thermodynamics that says you cannot get to the absolutely zero. We don't really know it's true, but we are pretty sure it is for the following reason. Every time you think of some way of cooling something down a little bit, it means you try to get energy out of that thing and make the temperature lower. Well, if you can get energy out, usually there is a way that the energy can go in as well. And that always means there is a competition between taking the energy out and putting the energy in. Now you can try to make it so you are favoring getting energy out, but you can't completely stop the energy from going in. And that means you might be able to get colder and colder, but you won't be able to get all the way to absolute zero. Could we go back to my PowerPoint? Because I think that one of these slides will illustrate that point a little bit better. Yes, here, remember the logarithmic thermometer? There is no zero on this logarithmic thermometer, just keeps going down. You make it a fact of 10 colder, you're not a zero. You make it a fact of 10 colder, you're still not a zero. You make it a fact of 10 colder, you're still not a zero. So you start a million of a degree, now you are 10 millions of a degree, now you are 100 millions of a degree, now you are billions of a degree. You never get to zero that way. You get closer and closer, but you never get to zero. So that's why we cannot get to absolute zero. The lecture is talking about the importance of absolute zero. It is also being spoken that law of physics can be considered. It is the third law which has definition about absolute zero. The lecture also mentions about cooling down a little bit of energy at the temperatures which are low. He also talks about that the energy which goes out and the energy can go in. It is a competition between energy going out and energy going in and they cannot complete and stop the energy at all. He also refers to his PowerPoint slide and it can be concluded that you can never get to zero. You might come closer. How do you call a public sale in which goods or property are sold to the highest price offered? Auction.
What protects birds on the outside of their bodies? Wings. Which one has a higher humidity, a desert or a rainforest? Desert. How many eggs are there in a dozen? Twelve. What is the legal document protecting someone's intellectual property? Patent. What animal is a shepherd responsible for? Sheep. All right, so that was pretty much how Kumash performed uh, in his uh, speaking. And um, of course, his performance was not flawless. He did make some mistakes. And even in the real test, he admitted that um, he missed a few representative questions and he also made mistakes in read aloud. It was like at one point in time during the exam, I was stuck on one question. So mm -hmm. Then I moved to the next one, but I was still thinking on the previous question. I realized that, okay, I don't need to worry what's already gone. Concentrate in the present moment. Exactly. When I started concentrating in the present moment, I was just calm and composed. I really hope that you guys learned something from Kumash. And, you know, I know that with the ongoing situation around the world, it's really affecting our plans a lot. And many of you might feel fear or stress or uncertainty. And trust me, it's very normal and you're not alone. However, this is the best time for us to stay focused and to prepare really well for this exam. You have so many resources available online for you to help you, to support you, to ace this exam. Sometimes you might hear the voices inside your head saying that you can't do it and just ignore that voice and believe in yourself and practice. Most importantly, practice. Practice is what makes you good and will help you to achieve that success. I wish you guys best of luck and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!